Hey guys, welcome, welcome to the weekly sales meeting. Kyle Kohler here representing Utah. I'm out here in Philadelphia. We're here with the jam-packed advisory council meetings today. I'm super excited to be able to go over things that we have at UMortgage. We got great energy out here. We're gonna go over operations. We're gonna go over technology. I love the tech here already, but we're gonna improve it. I actually did an application on my phone. It's pretty amazing the tech we have for our loan officers. And then again, operations. We're always trying to get better. We're always trying to improve on what we can do to get one day quicker, clear to close, because we wanna make sure we have the best experience for our clients. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, but uh, it's going to be a great sales meeting. I'm excited. So plus one is going to be the first thing I want to talk about. So what does plus one mean? So right now the market is a little bit more difficult than we've seen in the past. So we got to do the plus one things in order to, you know, get more loans. We got to go to the open houses. I'm telling you right now, guys, open houses is the way to go. You got to make sure your Saturday, try to make it convenient for you. If it's going to be around the house, uh, around where you live, the houses, that's the best way to do it. Find out the real estate agents you work with that are having open houses and see how you can provide value. Again, last week I got to be showcased on the sales meeting of how I provide value with the fee worksheet, but sometimes just being there and supporting them, it's great. I, I had another open house that I went to that like 35 people came in. 35 buyers came into this uh, open house and I was able to talk to at least 15 of them. They were willing to talk to me and you know have that chat. And guess what? I got two or three applications in not just from that house, it, it, they're gonna look at other houses. So it's it's great to be able to go in, do the plus one and make sure that uh, you're going to the open houses. Another plus one is making sure the loan quality of these loans are great. You wanna make sure that you got a really good loan. I mean, when you're starting the process with a borrower, when it's low stress, they're not they're not you know putting an offer in that moment, you're just getting pre-qualified, ask for everything up front. I like to go over everything up front because I'm the you know professional here. I've done a ton of loans and I wanna let them know that I'm gonna make sure you're gonna be bulletproof and you're gonna have everything you need to be able to close and we can put in that two week offer. So making sure you know they're excited at that moment, they're gonna send you stuff because you wanna, you wanna tell them, hey look, I'm gonna pre-approve you so that when I submit this underwriting, it's gonna be smooth and I'm gonna promise them that's gonna be smooth and they're not gonna have to worry about you know any stress factors because I've already done the hard work up front. So again, three to four you know hours up front is gonna save you three to four stressful hours on the back end. So I like to have three or four, you know, happy stress hours, I like to call them. And again, loan quality, guys. When you're ready to go, get ready submitted for operations. We wanna tee up our operations team because they're just, they're absolutely incredible. And they're working very hard. And when you tee them up well, I promise you they produce so well. They, we got some very talented individuals in operations and they wanna work hard for you. They, they care so much about this company and I just, I'm very, very happy with the team that we have around us here at UMortgage. And then lastly, I just wanna talk about um, products. So guys, we have a ton of products at UMortgage. It's not just conventional 5% down, 20% down, FHA 3.5% down. We have a lot of good products out there. You need to tell your real estate uh, you know, partners of these products. We have a killer bank statement program. We have an awesome 1099 program. So you want to make sure that you know these products really well and then tell your agent and referral partners about this. You tell the financial advisors, CPAs. That's another great thing. And also we're licensed nationwide. So a lot of people are moving outside the state that you're licensed in, but we have a ton of loan officers nationwide that can help you out. So again, loan quality, make sure it's great. Know your products and then tee up operations to make sure that everyone has, you know, great success throughout the process. I'm going to tee this next up. Andrew Katie, he's the man. I appreciate you guys. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Katie with the Epic Mortgage Team. I want to talk today about building a scalable business through delegation. So when I started in this business back in 2015, I was the Epic Mortgage guy. And I ran pretty much as a solo guy with a processor all the way through to 2019. And in 2019, I realized pretty quickly that things had gotten out of control. I couldn't simply handle the business that was coming in and still provide a five-star service and five-star expectations to my clients and referral partners. And so it was time to hire. The Epic Mortgage Guy became the Epic Mortgage Team and has now grown into what it is today. So let's talk about delegation. One of the best processes I've ever come across for doing this was something one of my coaches had me do. This was years before I need to hire someone. What he had me do was go on Amazon and buy a kitchen timer, one of those cheap little kitchen timers that you twist and turn. And I set that timer to ring every 15 minutes. And I did this process for two weeks. When that timer would ring, I would take a moment and write down two things that I had done in the previous 15 minutes. The end of the two weeks, I compiled eight pages of notes into an Excel spreadsheet, 
And then I assigned a dollar value to each item. How much would I pay per hour to have someone do that task? And then I calculated my annual income, divided it out by 60, 70 hours a week when I was working. And I quickly realized that I was doing a lot of tasks that were an eighth in value of what I should be making. And it was time to hire. And it was time to put people in place to begin to take the tasks that are 12, 14, $18 an hour tasks and run them to completion. Now, hiring someone is something you need to do early because finding the right person is not an easy process. My motto is, if I don't want to hang out with you on the weekends or catch a beer at the bar after work with you, we probably shouldn't work together. Don't necessarily hire just the first person that comes across your plate. Make sure that not only that person you hire meshes with your business model, but meshes with you personally, because there's a high probability you're gonna spend more time with that person than you will your significant other. It's just how it works in the business. Make sure you pick the right person. Make sure that it's someone that you get along with on a very, very good level. Now, I wanna talk about tracking and how you begin to dive into this. So one of the key indicators in our industry that I just blows my mind that loan originators don't track is their credit pulse. So the quickest way to know that your business is getting out of control is to track your credit pulse. I track them on a weekly basis and I go all the way back. I have a chart that dates all the way back to my first credit pull in 2015 and how many credit pulls we pull on a weekly basis. If you can, and you can pretty well guarantee that about 25% of your credit pulls will walk into a closing room. Now that's going to be different in different areas of the, of the country. Some people run a 30%, some people run a 10%. Doesn't really matter. Just understand your metrics. If you close 10 deals a month and you're pulling 40 credit repulls a month, you know that you've got a 25% closing ratio. And if you're tracking it on a weekly basis and you're going from 10 a week and you jump to 20 a week, you know that over the next two to three months, your pipeline is going to double as well because averages don't lie. So it's one of the best metrics to track these type of items. My call to action to you today is be involved. Be involved in the daily sales huddle. Be involved in the, in the chat groups we have set up in workplace. Be involved and learn from people that have been down this road. This isn't a situation, if you're an originator looking to scale it into a team, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to come up with your own processes and systems. There are systems and processes that have been refined by some of the best in the business that are willing to share with you. Just be involved. Get in there. Be on the sales huddles. Learn. Me, I've, I've done massive production when I was in my originating career, and I learn something new every single week when I'm on the sales huddle. So don't miss out on it. Hey guys, Patrick Stoy here with MC Mortgage Group in Wilmington, North Carolina. Just came onto the U Mortgage platform. Super excited about it. Look forward to meeting every single one of you and working toward helping people obtain home ownership. Um, what I want to talk about today is the one call close. What is a one call close? So basically, for us, a transaction is one of two things. It's either that they have got we've got them completely pre-approved, and the agent has access to the pre-approval portal, so that way they can generate rate a pre-approval letter on the fly or on a refinance they have actually paid for the appraisal super important so basically one call close as we get them on there we were introduced via three-way text by the agent we call them up and by the time we get off the phone that agent now can go put an offer in and they've got the thumbs up that they're good to go um, again on the refinance we want to make sure that they have signed all the documents Appraisal's paid for, they're committed, and we're good to go. So I always like to call that my one call close transaction. Now, it also leads into the assumptive close. So what I like about the assumptive close is they were they either called you or they were referred to you. So it's a much easier than us calling them out, basically, because what happens with the assumptive close is that they they basically are ready to move forward with you as long as you are answering their questions and walking them through the process because we are the trust advisors. So never ask for a sale twice. Are you, know, are you sure you wanna do this? Um, you really just wanna go into it from the perspective of, hey, we are going to do business and just run with it from that direction and, and go with it. It really, really helps. I've had great success going at it from that direction. Um, so just 
go with it. They are here to do business with you. And you know, and we know that you are the best person for them than any other mortgage company or loan officer out there. Hey guys. Hey, I'm Glenda White here, um, known as the Mortgage Coach DFW here with NXT Mortgage. And I have the um, lovely opportunity to speak to you guys about social media, uh, marketing tips, and just trying to stay top of mind in a market that is ever changing and we're just not sure where to go. Um, so for me on why I post on social media, it is about nurturing those relationships, the clients, the um, warranty title, insurance, anybody that we think could be involved in a transaction that allows me to stay in front of them. Now on how we stay intentional about all of this is we want to be relatable. We want to talk about some of the pain points that we have. Um, we want to be intentional on our day to day. So we don't just always post about business. Um, we want to post maybe content strategies for agents. We also want to show who we are with our families. If we're going out barbecuing in Texas, of course, we love barbecue. We love crawfish. Um, and of course, my beloved Dallas Cowboys, you're always going to see that on my social media post. Um, and how we keep content relatable today is find the pain points for your clients. So what I always challenge my agents is take a question that maybe your agent has or maybe your client has, or maybe if something just stumbled in the conversation, that is going to be today's content. So it could be rates, it could be two, one, buy down. It can always be about what today's market is, is your content for tomorrow. Now, how I stay top of mind with my clients, my agents, my referral partners, my, it doesn't matter who, social media is the one platform on any platform between LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, it doesn't matter. It's all about who you are and who you serve. So for me, I serve my community. My clients are going to be relatable to that. And that is where you find who your niche is. So find what is passionate to you, whether it's crawfish, beer, cowboys, it doesn't matter. That is how you're going to stay relatable to your clients. Now, the best call to action I have for you is to go find our monthly marketing material at you mortgage. Now I will tell you, it is one of the best top of mind materials that you're going to find. If you want a platform that is done for you, ready to go to where you can go out and actually navigate your business, go find the U-Mortgage marketing materials, download it. It's easy to do scripts. Heck, you can even turn it into your own video like I've done today and go rebrand it to yourself. So until next time, you guys go make it a great day. Hey, it's Adam West from Utah. Wanted to chat today about how to stay consistent through prospecting, pre-approvals, closings, just keeping the pipeline full while all these other things are going on in our lives. A lot of us loan officers get in a rut or I'd rather it ebbs and flows, right? You kind of have a huge month, you're closing a lot of loans and the next month you look at your pipeline, nada. So what went wrong? What did you do differently uh, that month versus the month prior? And a lot of us just get, we find ourselves being busy. We find ourselves working on active deals and we stop prospecting. So Really want to talk about three main ways that I'm able to get this and try to keep this consistent as possible. But the number one is, is creating your habit and keeping that habit. Like, what are you doing your Monday through Friday and then sometimes peppered in the weekends? What are you doing consistently every single week, day in and day out? There are times I'll leave on vacation and I'm still working because the work don't stop, but I'm still, uh, it's not nearly as, as productive as it, is when I'm, as it is when I'm home. And I see very quickly within the next two, three weeks, I kind of have a little bit of a lull because I was not being consistent with my habits. So staying consistent and making your habits. Number two is never get comfortable. I try to get myself out. I just, when I think things are comfortable, I try to make that next step and level up coaching coming soon. Holy crap. This is making it. So I'm getting out of my comfort zone a hundred percent. Um, and the last thing is just creating accountability for yourself. Like, why do you want to have your next month be less than it is now? You don't be accountable. And again, this coaching platform that's coming out, it's going to keep you accountable. Um, another piece of this that comes in is the evaluation piece. And so a lot of times I, I do this on like a weekly basis, maybe a monthly basis, but you're going to have the months or the weeks 
that were just insane. And I feel like right now the purchase market, the you know spring season, summer season, there's a lot of activity going on right now. And at the end of the week, you might be like, oh my gosh, pat on the back. I got some locks in, got some pre-approvals in. My pipeline looks good. My closings are gonna be solid, sweet. And that's great. But what about the weeks when it's Friday afternoon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., like no one's calling you. No emails are coming in. Nothing's really happening. What are you doing? Are you gonna call it a week? Pat yourself on the back. Oh, I did so good last week. I can just call it a weekend now. Or are you gonna dig in and become uncomfortable? I think that's the main piece of this is keeping yourself accountable, evaluating what you, what you did that week or what you did that month to set yourself up for the future. Because it's what you're doing now that's going to really trickle down in the next several months. Um, if you're not evaluating yourself weekly or daily or whenever, figure something out. Start finding how you're going to evaluate the work you've done. There's a big difference between being busy and being productive. Um, the, the main things that I think about with that is if you're busy, like you're in the file, you're helping the process or uh, process the, the conditions, you're, you're waiting for the AMC to answer about how they're going to get that 1004D finished. Like, cool, great. You, you had a busy day. Is that going to make you money next month? Probably not. Is that going to make you look like a hero in this current deal? Yeah, I like it. Some people might be impressed. So I'm not saying it's bad, but I think your time is very better spent with money making activities. So figure out what those are. If you're, if you're just feeling busy, you're not feeling productive, you got to evaluate how to make that change. You got to look at who you're going to talk to, how are you going to learn? How are you going to grow? How are you going to get out of your comfort zone? And if you're not, if you're not always getting in this mindset of like, I got to get more, I got to get more, um, you know, that maybe that's okay for you, but for those that want to scale and for those that want to grow and level up to the next potential, uh, loan officer, get uncomfortable. Like if I have weeks that, that I feel like I didn't have leads coming, like what the freak was I doing this week? Like, why was I not calling this realtor? Why was I not, I had this downtime. What was I doing? I hope that I was doing things that so I can see in the next two, three weeks, more deals are going to be coming in or more pre-approvals are going to be coming in. So always evaluate yourself, learn, grow, get uncomfortable, uh, call to action for those that are feeling in a rut or for those that need a little bit of juice to get them going, get on the daily sales huddle. There are very brilliant loan officers and people in our industry that jump on that daily sales huddle to help you. You want to get your production up? You're not showing up to that meeting? What are you, what are you doing? That's 30 minutes a day to help you learn, grow, gives you new ideas to get outside of your comfort zone to go get more deals. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Hey, I'm super excited to be here. Kyle touched on a little earlier, but we're here for our advisory council. So what that is, is we bring LOs from across the company here to Philadelphia to talk about operations, how to get better every single day. If you've been to any of our online sales meetings every Wednesday, you, Anthony talks about it, getting better every day. We're fully transparent. We want everyone to have a say. So before I came out here, I made sure to talk to all my people and said, what do we need to work on? What do we need to get better? And so the ones that had the biggest pain points, we talked about it. I'm going to address those today. That's super exciting. And that's really what we're about. That's why we're growing. That's why we do more loans per LO than any player in the wholesale channel of our size. There's a bunch of great companies out there, but on average, we do more. So we want to tell you how much we appreciate you for coming today. Obviously, how excited we are. I can't really go into a whole lot more detail about what the guys talked about before me. I mean, Adam and Patrick and Andrew, obviously, and Glenda did an amazing job. So we're just trying to share the message about why you mortgage is different and special. You know, obviously, I get to be on here. Pretty rare that we don't get to see Anthony, but it's awesome. Really, really excited. Really excited about the advisory council. Bring back great takeaways to help us get better to make those two-week turn times into 10-day turn times. If you want to learn more, reach out to us.